is kind of falling apart right now? Do you kind of feel a little bit like the world is spinning and you're struggling in your mental health? Today, we're going to dive into how should we handle mental health. When I was young, my parents used to collect plates. Now, how boring of a hobby is that? They used to collect these plates that would have like pictures of mountains and different stuff like that on it. And my dad actually inherited a plate from his mom and his great grandparents. And this plate meant a lot to him. Well, when my brother and I were playing around one day, he actually broke the plate. And in freaking out, he grabbed the plate and he was able to put it all back together. And his solution was he glued the back of the plate using carpenter's glue and about this thick of carpenter's glue, just put it all back together. But he was able to put it back on the shelf and we had it on the shelf. The front of the plate looked perfect. You couldn't tell that there was any issues on it at all. But on the back, there was this much glue. And my parents didn't even notice that that was real, that it was broken. For several years, we were able to hold up that kind of account. Now, reality is most of us are kind of like that. Well, we can look really good on the outside, but if you were to just turn us over or look inside, you can see that we're literally falling apart and we feel like we're being held together with the wrong glue and that everything could come unraveling in a moment. According to psychiatrist Frank and Paul Meir, the majority of Americans suffer from a serious clinical depression at some point in their lives. Most people just never get help. They just kind of feel that they can fight the battle on their own. And according to mental health websites, if you've been battling with a depressed mood, a loss of interest, sleep problems, difficulty concentrating, agitation, or restlessness almost every day for two or more weeks straight, then they're saying we should actually go and receive help and book an appointment with our doctor or a counselor. I want to encourage you for a moment. Sometimes there's this idea that we have to keep our plate or our outside looking perfect and our inside is broken and messed up. And if we were ever to address it, that we'd be considered wimps or failures or broken or something wrong by that. And I want to encourage you, you're not a wimp for realizing something is off. I want to encourage you that talking to somebody is not a negative thing. You're not wasting your time. The truth is, is I have a counselor in my life and they've been valuable to me to be able to just process just things that I have to wrestle through myself, the hurts and the hangups and the baggage that I walk with. Now, as I jump into how should we handle this and some of the stuff I've learned, I want to give a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not even a licensed counselor. I'm a pastor. I'm a spiritual guide. I'm what you can call a life coach. I can look at the Bible and I can read what the Bible says about a situation and I walk you through godly principles. But if you are battling with mental illness and would like to chat, I want to let you know that I can walk you through scriptures and I would love to connect, but I want to encourage you, would you reach out to a licensed counselor? Now, I want to jump into this idea that, that there's a story in Elijah that I want to look at that I think is so important for this concept of talking about mental health. So in Elijah's time, it's found in 1 Kings, one of these ancient texts of the Bible. It's found in 1 Kings, and the idea is that people of his time were walking in this massive rebellion, and they were serving this false god called Baal. The Bible lays out that there was one prophet and 400 prophets of Baal going in this competition against each other to see which god was real. And the Baal prophets, they danced all day long trying to get their god to do something, and he was never able to react. But Elisha, he says one prayer, and then fire falls down from heaven. And the Bible says the people of Israel turned and, and fell before God, and they repented before God and asked God to come and move. It's such a powerful story that if you have time to read, to read 1 Kings. But, but it moves from that powerful story to immediately following that Elijah gets filled with fear, and he runs away for his life. And he goes and he goes into hiding. And the Bible says he actually goes about a day's journey away from anything. He runs away for a day and he comes to this bush and he sits down at this bush and underneath this bush. And he actually says this prayer. He actually prays and says, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. And he laid down under this bush and he falls asleep. 
Did you hear that prayer? Have you, have you found yourself ever in that spot where you are kind of kind of being there and going, man, I feel like I've had enough. I don't feel like I could take anymore. I wish that life could just kind of come to an end. This is where Elisha is. And I want to talk about that for a second because there's this concept that, that depression is for the weak. Yet we just, in this story, are looking at a mighty man of God, one of the heroes of the faith who did an amazing thing for the kingdom of God. But depression found its way in. You see, the reality is depression and mental health can fall on the super strong. It can fall on people who seem to be healthy. It can fall on people who are being used by God. There's, there's no difference between all those. It can fall on any of us. So I want to encourage you today that, that depression doesn't, if you're struggling with depression or mental health, it doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean that if you know somebody's struggling that they're weak. The truth is it just means that something's going on and something's off. If we continue in the story of 1 Kings chapter 19, it says that as Elijah fell asleep, an angel came and sat down with him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. And so Elijah, he got up and he ate, and he drank, and he was strengthened by the food. And then he went on a journey for 40 days until he came to a mountain of God, Mount Harem. There's two things that hit me in this. One was this, is that the angel told him to get up, eat, and drink. I want to encourage you, and this is so important. Eating and sleeping is so important to our mental health. How well we eat really does make a difference. I know it's so tempting, especially right now, if you are living anywhere in, in where our broadcast location is, in, in Ontario, where you're struggling with another lockdown, the truth is, is it's so tempting to eat another bag of cheesies, right? It's so tempting to get up and go to the couch and just constantly be going back and forth from the kitchen uh, fridge to the couch all day long. Like, there's so much temptation and boredom just to eat and not eat anything good. But can I tell you that there's so much dialect uh, report between how we eat, how we sleep, and how our mental health actually works. The second thing that stood up to me is, it says, hey, the angel says, get up from where you are and go on a journey. I want to encourage you. We have to be so careful with our thoughts that we don't camp in places we were never intended to camp. We got to be careful that we don't sit up and go, man, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm getting lost in this thought and spending so much time in this thought. Reality is we got to move on from some thoughts. We've got to declare them to be, you know what? I've exhausted and wasted too much time thinking about this situation, wrestling through this, playing this game over and over in my mind. We can't set up camp where we were never intended to stay. The other thing that hit me is that he travels for 40 days and 40 nights till he gets to the mount. Of Herob. This is the mountain of God. This is the spot where Moses received the Ten Commandments. This is a mighty mountain. And what's happening here is God is bringing him back to a place of worship, back to a place in the presence of God. And I've learned in my mental health that I'll do, not only do I have to eat right and drink right and sleep right, not only do I have to not camp on thoughts that I was never intended to camp on, but I also have to come back to God. I have to come back and spend time with Jesus. I got to come back to his house and, and spend time in the presence of God, whether that be in my own personal prayer life, whether that be through worship music, whether that be through watching church online. I've got to come and get in that spot where I'm spending time before God and I'm allowing him to wash over me who he declares I am. Instead of me sitting and trying and figuring it out, I actually have to come and say, God, I need you. This, these thoughts can't leave me. This mental health I'm struggling, it feels like I'm walking through mud. It feels like things aren't working. But God, I need you to come in. So I eat right. I sleep right. I don't camp on thoughts. And I have to come before God and I worship him. And when I'm worshiping him, I tell him what's going on. It's so important in our lives 
to make sure we're talking about our struggles and not just building them up and building them up and building them up. I used to do this illustration where I take a garbage bag and I would keep filling it with junk and, and walk around with it. And I just keep putting more junk into it until at some point that garbage bag was so full, it would split and the garbage would come pouring out. When we choose not to talk about our struggles and the things that we're wrestling through, we end up just shoving it back into a garbage bag until it becomes so full that it's going to overflow and a wave of emotions and situations are going to come. So we need to talk. I want to encourage you to talk to God. Talk to God. He, you can't offend him, and he's not surprised at what you're saying, and he understands your feelings. I want to encourage you to talk to a loved one, someone who cares about you and loves you and believes in you and stands with you. I want to encourage you to talk to a medical professional, whether it be a medical doctor or whether it be a licensed counselor or whether it be a pastor. I want to encourage you, would you talk to someone? By talking, you're actually giving room for healing to enter into your life. So in closing, I want to encourage you. Mental health is real. And it's okay to not be okay. We get that. There's just seasons and times where we're not okay. It's just not okay to stay there. We believe in you enough to say you're more important than staying stuck. And so let's do what we can to walk in freedom. Let's do what we can to eat right, to sleep right, to drink right. Let's do what we can to not camp on thoughts. Let's do what we can of engaging God in his presence and being washed over by him. Let's talk about our situations and our struggles and find healing and hope in the midst of them. I want to encourage you today, if you are struggling, get help. You are not weak, but rather getting help is one of the strongest things you can do. And I want to encourage you that it's made a difference in my life and my ability to lead because I've been able to seek help when I needed it at key points in my life. Thanks so much for checking us out. Listen, we're having an amazing time. For the rest of this month, we're going to be talking about pornography and how dangerous it is and what it can do in our lives. And so we're going to have real talk about pornography starting next week. Can't wait to jump into that.